Andrew Cuomo to be prosecuted and Andrew Cuomo to be impeached following the bombshell admission that they obstructed justice. Today we know that the FBI and the U.S. Attorney in Brooklyn are investigating his administration. What has unfolded under the last week is nothing short of stunning. We are witnessing the unraveling of a cover-up in the implosion of a lying and corrupt governor. There are many of us who have known just who Andrew Cuomo is for a very, very long time. Someone who cares only about his own publicity and power, who will go to any length to evade accountability, who lies with impunity, who threatens to destroy people who don't go along with his cover-up, who obstructs justice, who does favors for his million-dollar contributors at the expense of people's lives. His former top aide and self-described brother is currently in prison, serving a sentence for his boss's pay-to-play scheme. There isn't a person in New York state politics or government who doesn't think that Joe Prococo fell on the sword to protect the boss. Now today, his new top aide, Melissa DeRosa, is facing the same exact dilemma. And once again, investigators need to follow the money. His deadly order forced COVID positive patients, that order of March 25th, COVID positive patients out of hospitals and into nursing homes with our most vulnerable New Yorkers. These were hospitals who had a direct line to the governor. Hospitals and hospital bosses who paid handsomely for that access, donating over a million bucks to Andrew Cuomo's campaign account in the last year alone. Hospitals and executives who paid handsomely for that access, $15,000 a month to Melissa DeRose's father's lobbying firm. Their influence won out over good old-fashioned common sense and good public policy. Of all the things we didn't know about COVID-19 last spring, what we did know was how deadly it was, how contagious it was, and how it affected our seniors worse than any other segment of our population. Yet Cuomo still chose the needs of his donors over the lives of New Yorkers. And then he went on television, day after day, month after month, for hours, and he looked into the camera and he lied to you. He lied to the press. He lied to taxpayers. He lied to the state legislature. He lied to every New Yorker. He lied to America. It was a masterful performance and it won him an Emmy. He wrote a book about how great a job he did. But it was a performance that was built on the coffins of 15,000 New York State senior citizens. Andrew Cuomo is unfit to continue his service as governor of the state of New York. I, and now many others, have called for impeachment articles to be drafted. New York officials have been forced out of office for much less than this. This is worse than Troopergate. This is worse than having your staffer drive your wife around. This is worse than a governor not paying for his Yankee tickets. And you know what? This is worse than being client number nine. This is a grave and deadly and devious abuse of the office of the governor. An abuse for which this governor has not shown an ounce of remorse or accountability. In fact, he doubled down time and again, and he's threatened to destroy those who haven't helped him cover his tracks. What he is doing right now to Assemblyman Ron Kim is disgusting. He threatened him. And he turned around yesterday and he tried to destroy his credibility and his integrity. This is a feature of Andrew Cuomo. This is not a bug. How many times have you in the media received that bullying, screaming phone call from the governor or one of his minions? They said it themselves, they operate at two speeds, get along or kill. Unfortunately for Andrew Cuomo, it looks like enough people have started to realize that you fight back against the bully 
and they just collapse. And his attacks against victims, families, his death cults, and everyone else who's been on the receiving ends of the governor's sick personality, they've had enough. The emperor has no clothes in the state of New York. And the people of this state deserve to hear what their senior U.S. Senator, and that's why I stand here today in front of Chuck Schumer's office, what they have to say about this entire ordeal. Chuck Schumer is the most powerful New Yorker in the federal government. He may very well be the most powerful Democrat in the state of New York. But Schumer was just in Albany the other day, and he ran away from reporters refusing to take questions on this topic. Now, I don't have to tell the people in the media here gathered today that if Chuck Schumer's running away from a camera, this must be a pretty serious scandal. But he must come out of hiding. He must share his thoughts and comments on this story. He must add his voice to the growing bipartisan support for a thorough and independent investigation into the Cuomo nursing home cover-up. He must stand up for truth and accountability. He must send a message that no one is above the law, not even the powerful Andrew Cuomo. We've heard a lot of virtue signaling out of Chuck Schumer and the Democratic Party lately. But is Chuck Schumer willing to sacrifice his integrity for this governor? It's time for Chuck Schumer to put his money where his mouth is because New Yorkers are watching. Victims' families are watching. This isn't red versus blue. This isn't Democrat versus Republican. This is right versus wrong. You're either on the side of justice or you're part of the cover-up. What's it gonna be, Chuck? So I'll take any questions you have at this time. Wow. All right. Well, I, I just missed a lot. Hi, Karen. Hi, it's probably going to be repeated, but I'm That's just okay. wondering, um, you know, did it come up? You've been asking for investigations of Cuomo. Did it come to, as a surprise to you last night that it's not one, but two investigations that, you know, the public have not even heard about? Well, I'm, I'm uh, very pleased to see what the news that was broken last evening by the Times Union, uh, that the FBI and the U.S. Attorney in Brooklyn have uh, taken up this case. They've opened a file. Uh, we don't, we're not going to know much. The federal government works in mysterious ways that way unless they're they're going to leak. But, um, you know, I, I am very pleased to hear that this is moving forward. So many of us on all sides of the political spectrum here in New York have been calling for an open and transparent investigation. I pray every day that Tish James continues to have the courage and that she uses her office to help get answers uh, at the state level. You know, they have, we have an awful lot of investigators in the Office of Attorney General. Uh, my hope is that we uh, can uh, get uh, her office to, to have a thorough investigation as well. Uh, but this is positive news. I, I was coming here today to call on Chuck Schumer to, uh, to join the list of us that have called for a federal investigation. Looks like the federal government beat him to the punch. Uh, but, you know, I think it's uh, reprehensible that the senior U.S. Senator, the Senate Majority Leader, ran away from the press, uh, so he didn't have to face this topic. Last week you announced a recall effort. Any support from the other side on that? Well, it's, it's amazing what a week will bring you, because uh, by Monday, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, we were talking about a recall effort. Uh, that's a long, painstaking process, as we outlined in that press conference. We believe New Yorkers deserve the right to have recall. It wouldn't affect this situation. Uh, I, we've, we've had uh, people of multiple parties now call for impeachment. Uh, you know, several political parties have called for the governor's impeachment. I have called for the governor's impeachment. I mean, there's pretty crystal clear obstruction of justice on the line here. Uh, there looks to be some very fed up Democrats in the state legislature. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of talk about repealing these powers. I, I think this is six months too late to repeal these powers. It should have been done a long time ago. Uh, that's a scapegoat. Uh, uh, easy way out. These, these powers would sunset at the end of April anyway. Uh, that is not a punitive measure. It's just what's right for New York state government to get rid of these needless powers. He's killed enough businesses. 
Uh, his decisions killed a lot of senior citizens, but they've killed too many businesses too. So uh, my hope is that we get serious about his fitness to serve in the office going forward uh, in, in discussion of impeachment, I hope ramps up next week when the legislature comes back to work. What exactly would he be impeached for? Obstruction of justice. I think that we need subpoenas because uh, we're, we're, we don't know what all is in there. We don't know what they sent to the federal government. They have not uh, told uh, the federal government, or they have not disclosed to us what the, the federal government got out of this uh, investigation. Uh, and, and he has clearly not taken any accountability for these actions. I mean, the governor uh, and his administration are in free fall as we speak right now. And you have Democrats actually leading the charge and in, uh, in calling for, you know, an end to the powers and possibly impeachment. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.